I, well, I wanted to go on and win a state championship, and it's something my high school friends still talk to me about to this day. A lot of them are a little jealous about the, the national championship because they definitely wanted the, the state championship a couple years back. But overall, you felt pretty good, and you were, you were getting offers from, from different programs. When did Miami, Ohio enter the picture? You know, I th they entered the picture, uh, you know, in the summer before my senior year. I, I hadn't had any offers yet, actually, and, and Miami, Ohio was my first offer. What did you like about that program? I really enjoyed the, the campus. Um, I headed off the coaches immediately. You know, Mike Bath, the QB coach, I, I really liked him. And I, you know, I felt comfortable at, like, entering the program. But you never even made it on campus, so you, you gray shirted, uh, so you weren't even there at all in that fall. Correct, yeah. So I took a, a, the fall semester off and was yeah. just hanging out at home. Miami, Ohio hires Chuck Martin as its new head coach. Um, when did you start to see that there would be some trouble for, for you? Well, Immediately, um, you know, once he was hired, he called a recruit and, and told him that there would be a spot, um, you know, for them on the team. He couldn't promise, you know, what the offense would look like. Um, you know, he, he told me personally, you know, I, I'm going to be recruiting quarterbacks that are, you know, a lot more athletic than you, um, you know, aren't going to be the same skill set as you. And, and that's the, the type of program we're having here. Uh, we want our quarterback to be really athletic and run the ball. And, and throw the ball as well and, and, and that type of thing. And, you know, that didn't scare me at all. Um, you know, I, I didn't run the ball a lot in high school, but, you know, I felt confident running the ball. Um, you know, from that point on, you know, I made a lot of phone calls trying to call Coach back, but, um, you know, I, I wasn't getting any answers on those phone calls. And, you know, after about two weeks, I, I started kind of noticing, you know, I'm, I'm making this routine phone call and it's routinely being not answered. You know, I, I wouldn't say it scared me, um, but, you know, it kind of opened my eyes a little bit. You know, I, I've got to start thinking about what are my other options here. When did you get the phone call that you knew there was not a place for you at Miami, Ohio? Well, I called Miami, Ohio about every day for about 50 days. Um, and so I kind of got the idea it was going to happen. But it wasn't until what would have been my orientation day at Miami, Ohio, you know, when I got the phone call from administration telling me that I wouldn't have uh, an opportunity there. Yikes. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, I wasn't broken by it. I kind of, I already had the understanding. And, you know, in this world, um, that's kind of how things work. Um, you know, recruiting's tough, and that's kind of how it goes. What was football limbo like for you? It was tough. Um, you know, it was definitely a time where, um, you know, there was not a lot of sp stability in my life. And, um, you know, I credit to, to my, my parents for, you know, keeping my head on straight. And, you know, I, I just want to put my head down and, and figure this thing out. And, and find out where I'm going to be. I don't want to sulk on it. Uh, I don't want to talk about, you know, the bad things that's happened to me. Um, I just want to focus on, you know, what can I do now to, to, to make my future brighter. You know, I was sitting around. I thought I was about to go to school, and now I'm not going to school. Um, I thought I was about to go f play football, and now I'm not playing football. And it was kind of like, well, what am I doing? You know, when I look around, you know, I've got my best friends back home are extremely bright, and they're all, you know, at universities, you know, being successful and, and planning out their future. And, you know, I was sitting at home watching TV, so um, I was kind of nervous, you know, I got to get this thing figured out and, you know, start the rest of my life here. When and how did JMU enter the picture for you? Well, actually, you know, I went on to junior college and, um, you know, I played, this, I played spring ball there and I made a, a highlight film and, and sent it to pretty much every program in the country. And, you know, I didn't, I got a lot of responses and I didn't get a lot of responses. and. You know, I got one from JMU about a month after, you know, I sent them the video and it was right around the, the time they had a QB transfer out. And, um, you know, I, I immediately hit it off with Coach Manager, who was here at the time. Um, he got me out to campus, you know, I never really looked back. Underdog No More continues next week when Brian Shore discusses his time at James Madison from earning the starting quarterback role to overcoming an injury on the way to winning a national championship. Part two of our interviewers next week right here on WHSV.